All right, so let's talk about how long you should be holding a stretch if your goal is to improve your flexibility. Very often I have clients come right into this office for physical therapy and I tell them how long they need to be holding their stretches if their goal is to improve their flexibility and they look at me and their jaws drop. And the reason for that is that most people have been told over and over again that they should be holding their stretches for 30 to 60 seconds. And then I come in and tell them they should be holding it for more like two to three minutes. And again, that's way longer than 30 to 60 seconds. And often I'm the first person that's told that person that they need to be holding their stretches that long. So let's discuss why I say that. Now, we've done studies, and by we, I don't mean Mia, by we, I mean science. So there are studies out there. There's literature that shows that when we put tissue on stretch, the cells that actually respond to that stretch stimulus don't actually start responding until in and around two minutes. So those cells are called fibroblasts, and you don't really need to know that, but we need to know that those cells, the things that actually create the change that we're looking for, don't actually start receiving that message and doing anything about it until in and around that two minute mark. So if I'm doing a 30 or a 60 second stretch, and my goal is to cause a change in that tissue, but the cells that actually create that change in that tissue don't really pick up on that message or do anything for two minutes, or in and around two minutes, then there's a good chance that I'm not gonna get very much out of that stretch. So if your goal is to improve your flexibility, we wanna make damn sure that those cells get that message and do something about it. So two minutes I usually set is kind of the minimum in terms of how long I want somebody holding that stretch. Most frequently I prescribe in and around three minutes, but it depends on the person, it depends on the goal, and it depends on our time frame. So I would just take that two minute mark and try and set that as your minimum when you are in that stretch. Because again, if you want to achieve your goal and your goal is to improve passive flexibility, make sure that you're at least doing it long enough to communicate to the cells that help you achieve that goal that you want that change so that they start responding to it. Our bodies are all about giving it a stimulus and getting that adaptation, but you have to give it enough stimulus for your body to actually adapt. And I'd argue that 30 to 60 seconds based on the literature that's currently out there is not enough time to get that stimulus. Now beyond that, if we were to take that one step further, I'd also argue in most cases that if you're doing a passive stretch to gain more flexibility, you would probably benefit from following that with some active inputs. And what that means is that if you think about when you do a stretch, you're usually just sitting in a stretch. You take a tissue from point A to point B, you put it in the length that you want, and then you sit there for a little while. And then a lot of people just come out of it and then they go about their day again. But if you want that flexibility and you want it to stick and you want it to be usable, you're probably gonna benefit from actually training it there. So instead of just taking that tissue to a lengthened state, spending your two to three or whatever time period you spend there and then going about your day again, keep it there after your stretch and start to load it there. So drive a little bit more adaptation, teach your nervous system how to use that tissue in that length, teach, the, or teach that tissue how to produce force there, and teach the muscles on the opposite side how to pull that tissue into that position. So we wanna make sure that we look on both sides of the joint. If I'm stretching something like my hamstring, I wanna make sure that I also train my hip flexor how to actually work here, rather than just stretching there and not doing anything about it. Cause then I might find that if I lift my leg up or use something to get myself here, I can at least get into this position, but I might not be able to maintain it if that support goes away which makes me a little bit more vulnerable there and makes it less likely that my nervous system maintains that range of motion. Now this is where things like pails and rails come in really handy. So progressive and regressive angle isometric loading, big words, I know. If you've never heard of that before, you don't know what those are, you don't really know how to apply that, I've also made a video that you can watch on pails and rails to help understand that and understand how it applies to this scenario and how we can use it to help to build strength, to help to build control and kind of hit the save button on those new ranges of motion and on those lengths that we seek to achieve. So again, that's something that I would say that should be followed with um, or stretching should be followed with in most instances. 
training the tissue that you're stretching in that lengthened state in that specific position and training the tissue on the opposite side as well starting to build strength there starting to build neurological control there teach your nervous system teach your tissues about that position as well so i'd also like i said recommend watching that video and if you want to learn how to apply these things if you want to find some follow along videos and start to get to work on this type of mobility training then i also have an online platform called operation human first which again walks you through all of this stuff goes into way more detail on it you'll find loads more education there and then i also teach you how to apply these things and you have loads of follow along videos that actually run you through mobility training for specific joints specific movements and so on if you guys have any questions about that, don't hesitate to reach out. You can drop any comments in the question or any questions in the comments below and I'll answer them for you. Whenever you watch one of my videos, make sure to check the description below the video because I'll always drop links to related videos, links to exercises that would go well with the one that you just finished watching, links to free mobility classes, eBooks, and to my ever-growing library of full-length training videos. Additionally, if you found this specific video helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button below and that'll send me the message that you wanna see more videos like this one. You can also subscribe to be notified when new videos like this one are available. And if there's something specific that you wanna see a video on, just let me know in the comments below and we'll try and make that happen. Otherwise, take care and we'll see you in the next one.